Today we'll enjoy just a tiny bit of schadenfreude. But before we get to that, did you know that one of the strongest digital safety measures that you can take is to have a US mobile number? Because then it is less likely that NSO's Pegasus will be used to hack your phone. And because Shalev Julio, the founder CEO of NSO tells his clients that hacking US numbers using his software is off the table. It is not hard to imagine that there is a demand for a tool like Pegasus. That it is lucrative to make and sell surveillance software to governments, that NSO did a very good job of it especially with Pegasus, that it was used for some good end goals and some very questionable and downright bad end goals, that some financiers made good money from NSO's work while there was a lot of hue and cry from the global media, that the US government decided to put it on the entity list, that its owners are in disarray, that the company is facing bigger challenges with the bad press and the US sanctions, that the future is not bright. But before we go any further, let's get the basics out of the way. NSO is based in Israel, and it makes surveillance software, the most notorious of which is Pegasus. The company is 11 years old, it is large and profitable. It pulls in revenue of close to $250 million, and employs around 700 people, most of them in Israel. The company is most famous for its software Pegasus. This tool was used to hack into the phones of Jamal Khashoggi, among others. It used to be owned by an American private equity, Francisco Partners, who bought it in 2014 for $130 million, and sold it back to the founders for a $1 billion. More recently, the company has been going through some troubled times. It has been sued by Facebook and Apple, because Pegasus was used to hack into WhatsApp and iPhones. It has been put on the sanctioned entity list by the US, which means that US businesses cannot sell NSO any products or services. It can be quite debilitating to say the least. This has clearly impacted its capability to generate revenue, to the extent that Moody's, the rating agency, has downgraded its credit rating. There are serious question mark on the firm's ability to service $500 million worth of loans which the company took when its founders acquired the business back from Francesco Partners in 2019. Weirdly, Novalpina Capital, the PE firm which part funded the management buyout, and is the majority owner of the business, is itself in trouble. The general partners, those who are supposed to manage and run the fund, are feuding. This led to the limited partners, those who gave money to the fund, dissolving the fund, and handing over its control to Berkeley Research Group which specializes in returning money back to the limited partners. When the excrement hits the fan, BRG comes in, tries to sell whatever assets they can, and return the maximum amount of money back to the limited partners. Which is another way of saying that NSO's majority owner may be looking to exit the businesses in a more urgent fashion. And sure enough, there are news of NSO asking investment bank, Moilis and company, to look for buyers. More recently, Jefferies, a Wall Street investment bank, which is acting as the administrative agent for the NSO's loans resigned from its position. Jefferies, and Credit Suisse, another investment bank, were the underwriters for the acquisition loan for the management buyout. Apparently, because they could not fund investors to fund the loan, the underwriters had to pay the amount. They then later sold this loan onwards at a steep discount. And now Jefferies doesn't want anything to do with the business because the US has put NSO on the sanctioned entities list. And to top it all, the CEO of the business resigned too, within two weeks of being appointed, once the US sanctions came into effect. In the general scheme of things, a cool way to earn money is by selling stuff to moneyed buyers, stuff that they may desire deeply. Governments are one of the most moneyed entities in the world. And good surveillance tools are one of the things that they may desire more than many other things. It is no surprise that the global surveillance market is in the excess of $15 billion. And Pegasus is at the cutting edge of that surveillance. Having the ability to hack into any phone in the world very easily and unobtrusively, is many a dictator's, and even legitimate democratic government's wet dream. That is one of the reasons why Israel uses Pegasus to build good relations with its neighbors, which are dictatorships. Europeans use it too. However, they are not dictatorships. What about money? 
There is nothing, apart from a whiff that this must be an immensely profitable business. There are shady PE firms involved. And customers who are not very wholesome. And the business is media shy. But does it mean that it is making a ton of money? Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly little financial information available in the public domain. It's been in the business for a long time. And there are many others who are doing similar things. Could it be that their product got highlighted in some of the worst ways possible? If your product is used by a dictator to kill a journalist, then the international media has a field day with it. Truly unwholesome but surely profitable business. After all, what can go wrong, if you are selling surveillance software to governments? So that's it for this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed it, as that helps out this tiny channel a lot. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.